The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 3 has finally been released on Disney Plus and with it we were taken to the water world which we saw in the Season 2 trailer where we were introduced to someone very familiar from the Clone Wars and Rebels TV series. So I'm going to break down everything that went down in the episode and how it connects to the other Star Wars TV series and films. Before we get into it, make sure you absolutely force crush the subscribe button for more awesome Mandalorian Season 2 content. To start off the episode, we immediately see the badly damaged Razorcrest zooming through space after escaping the close relatives of the Krickners from Star Wars Rebels in the last episode. Mando, the child and the frog lady are fast asleep inside of the cockpit of the ship, but they are soon awoken by the ship's proximity sensors beeping as they have finally arrived at the water moon of Trask. Unfortunately, the landing array of the Razorcrest is damaged, forcing the Mando to perform a manual re-entry and pull the ship through the atmosphere with incredible precision. Trask Landing Control aren't too happy with how fast Mando is bringing the Razorcrest down, firmly warning him multiple times to slow his descent. Mando does eventually get his ship down to a safe landing speed before hovering above the platform, but unfortunately, his ship tumbles off the side of the platform and into the deep blue oceans of Trask. Interestingly, when the engines on the Razorcrest fail, they actually make the same sound that Anakin's pod racer engines made when they failed in The Phantom Menace. Immediately following this, you can see what looks like a modified or repurposed AT-AT walker with a crane mounted on top, lifting the Razorcrest out of the water. Those were of course first seen in The Empire Strikes Back, so it's awesome to see them have a different purpose after the Imperial Era. Following this, we then get a heartwarming scene where the frog lady is reunited with her frog husband before they give huge thanks to Din Djarin for safely returning their eggs. The Mando is honoured to have helped out, but quickly shifts his attention to finding the other Mandalorian covert on this moon, which he was of course told about in the last episode. As he does this, we get a shot of the same dark-robed figure who we saw in the Mandalorian Season 2 trailer, of course being played by Sasha Banks. This character is not Sabine Wren, which was the most popular theory, but instead, a new character called Koska Reeves. After this, the Mando is quickly brought to a cantina, where he is able to pay the owner with the same Mon Calamari Flan currency that was given to him by Grief Karga in the first season in exchange for information about the Mandalorian covert on the planet. After handing over the slippery currency, Mando is directed to another Quarren who tells him that he knows the location of the Mandalorians on the planet, but that it will take a few hours boat ride to reach them. Mando agrees to this and boards the boat, believing that he will finally be taken to the covert. Once on board however, the Quarren trick Mando by showing him the Mama Core, and while he is watching, they savagely kick the child's capsule into the ferocious beast's mouth before Mando jumps into the murky water to save him. As soon as he does this, the Quarren lock the cage above, trapping him and putting his life in grave danger. Mando is on the brink of death, but out of nowhere, a group of Mandalorians known as the Night Owls rush on board to save Din Djarin and the child's life. The Night Owls are of course the group led by Bo-Katan Kryze, who we first saw appear in the Clone Wars and later in the Rebels TV series. Bo-Katan and the Night Owls split off from the group known as the Death Watch after former Sith Lord Darth Maul took the rulership of Mandalore and became the holder of the Darksaber by horrifically beheading Pre Vizsla, the previous holder. Bo-Katan and her Night Owls split off from the Death Watch because they would never accept an outsider as the ruler of Mandalore, while another group known as the Mandalorian Super Commandos remained loyal to Maul. I have a big theory about one of these Super Commandos, Rook Cast, potentially being the Armorer, linked in the pinned comment down below, which now makes a lot more sense with Bo-Katan appearing. Bo-Katan was also the previous holder of the Darksaber after it was handed to her by Sabine Wren in Star Wars Rebels, uniting all of the clans of Mandalore together before Moff Gideon was able to steal it during the Great Purge. And if The Mandalorian is the only Star Wars content you've watched so far, I'll link a few videos in the description which will help you understand the history of Mandalore from both the Clone Wars and Rebels. Next, Bo-Katan and the others take their helmets off, which of course disgusts Din Djarin, making him believe that they are not real Mandalorians. The Night Owls are equally disgusted with the Mando, saying he's one of them. Sasha Banks' character, Koska Reeves, also says the old Mandalorian phrase, Dank Ferric, which is often used to express anger or frustration by Mandalorians. This phrase probably also has some other meanings which I can't say on the video. Following this, we find out that Din Djarin's group of Mandalorians are a group of extreme Mandalorian zealots known as the Children of the Watch, who operate with the goal of following the old Mandalorian ways and were cast out of Mandalorian society long ago. The Mando then watches Bo-Katan and her Night Owls destroy the ship before zooming off into the sunset. As the Mando then walks back onto the fishing docks, 
a group of Quarren criminals walk up to him with one furiously saying, you killed my brother. The group are about to pounce on him, but the Night Owls will not leave one of their own for dead, despite their differences, rushing in to save him and swiftly blasting all of the Quarren, killing them immediately. The Night Owls then sit down with the Mando and tell him that they are planning to take back control of Mandalore and ask him to help with that goal. The Mando unfortunately tells them that he is being tasked with returning the child to the Jedi, which in response Bo-Katan tells him that she can lead him to one of their kind. But the Night Owls need help with a mission first. Bo-Katan is of course very familiar with the Jedi, having met Obi-Wan during Maul's takeover, and of course Ahsoka Tano during the Siege of Mandalore, who wasn't a Jedi at the time, but was close enough for Bo-Katan to consider them the same. Bo-Katan and her group want to steal the nearby Imperial Gazanti class freighter, which of course is a class of ship in the spotlight right now, because of Star Wars Squadron's recent release. Din Djarin then drops off the child with the frog lady and her husband to be the babysitters, before he and the Night Owls scout out the Gazanti freighter and board the vessel carefully. Mando and the Night Owls then absolutely shred through the Stormtrooper defences on the ship, obliterating each one they come across, which quickly gets the attention of the Imperial captain on board. The Night Owls eventually break into the cargo control area of the ship, killing a few Imperials as they discover the large stash of weapons inside. While scavenging the weapons, Mando finds out that Bo-Katan's plan was not just to steal the weapons, but to commandeer the entire ship. He of course is not happy with this, as he didn't sign up for a job this big, but Bo-Katan teases him, mocking his cult, saying, this is the way. Immediately following this, we finally get to see Moff Gideon make his first appearance of the season, contacting the ship's captain through hologram. Through this conversation, we discover that Moff Gideon's Imperial Remnant is just as extreme as Din Djarin's Children of the Watch. Gideon orders his captain to slaughter his two pilots before sending the ship plummeting towards the deep oceans below. Before he is able to crash the ship into the ocean below, however, Mando and the Night Owls break the cockpit door open with extreme force and take control of the ship. Bo-Katan is then able to hold the captain to knife point, furiously demanding to know where the Darksaber is and if Moff Gideon has it. This implies that Bo-Katan knows Moff Gideon and how he got the Darksaber, which means he likely stole it directly from her instead of finding it left somewhere like what happened to Maul on Dathomir. This will certainly be expanded upon in the next episodes. As soon as the Imperial Captain realises that he is not going to survive, he activates a death tooth inside of his mouth which electrocutes him and kills him immediately. This same device was actually seen in the first Phasma novel and later in the Galaxy's Edge Black Spire novel. Some versions of the device use a toxic crystal hidden inside of the tooth, but this one appears to have an electrical device wired to kill its user. The device was activated by lifting the top of the tooth up, which was modified to use a hinge, wetting the circuit and causing instant electrocution. Following this, we finally get the name drop that so many of us have been waiting for since the end of Star Wars Rebels. Din Djarin demands to know where he can find the Jedi, and Bo-Katan responds, telling him he can find Ahsoka Tano in the city of Caladan on the forest world of Corvus. I don't think I even have to explain how massive this connection is to both the Clone Wars, Rebels, and so much other content. Ahsoka has become one of the most important characters in the Star Wars TV shows, and is now deeply connected to the ongoing story. An awesome little touch here is that the sound Bo-Katan's helmet makes when she takes it off for the conversation is actually the same sound that Darth Vader's helmet makes when it is first placed on his head in Revenge of the Sith. I'm sure the audio team are just reusing old sounds, but it's an awesome little connection either way. So that is my full breakdown plus recap on The Mandalorian Chapter 11, The Heiress. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe to be notified as soon as I release the next breakdown next week. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.